What are the odds in the crucial Game 3 of the NBA Finals showdown between the Dubs and the Cavs? And do the Cavs have enough star power and firepower and make the most of its home court advantage? Sports analyst and writer Brandon Scooby Robinson joins us from the East Coast this morning to weigh in. Scoop B, good morning. Or good, good morning from the Philippines and good evening to you there over in the East Coast. Good morning in Manila. Hello over here, man. It's going to be tough for the Cavaliers, but um, there's no place like home. Uh, down 0-2 in the series, having a chance to win it in Game 1. There's a lot of, a lot of fire under their behinds. And the Cavaliers, the time is now or never. And uh, I think a, a revitalized team, and including a Rodney Hood in their rotation, which they should have done all along, uh, Quicken Loans Arena is no uh, spring chicken. And, and I really do think, as Steph Curry said earlier in the day, um, they have to reassess a lot of things. Um, switching venues, switching coasts, switching time zones. Uh, that's an arduous task for the Warriors. The pressure's on them. But at the same time, uh, LeBron James has to be like game one LeBron James, 51 points, a uh, ton of rebounds, ton of assists. And it gets a little harder with uh, Andre Iguodala uh, rejoining the, the Golden State Warriors in game three. Scoop B, uh, you mentioned about the insertion of Rodney Hood. How vital is he going to be in terms of the rotation and maybe the versatility in the bench or in the lineup of the Cavaliers? Well, I mean, you, at the NBA's trading deadline in February, you traded for him for a reason. Where has he been? Uh, you, you know, I, you saw him during the regular season scoring in bunches at times. And, you know, George Hill could use some help uh, spelling him in, in, in minutes. And he's, he's got a hot hand when he's, when he's on. And the time is now for, for, the, for the Cleveland Cavaliers. I, I've said this before. Anytime George Hill scores five points or more, uh, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers are well on their way. Uh, Game one was kind of a falter for him, missing that key pivotal second free throw and, and, and that blunder with J.R. Smith getting the offensive rebound. But for Rodney Hood, uh, he can score in bunches. Just a year ago, he was playing for Utah and, and, and making opponents pay on the defensive end. Rodney Hood needs to do more of the same. Can, can Steph Curry check him? Well, he's pretty quick. Steph Curry's quick, too. He hit nine three-pointers in game two, but Rodney Hood going to have to be that spark for the, for the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, in addition to, you know, a, a continued uh, a Kyle Korver and, and, and also Kevin Love playing well. Rodney Hood's going to have to click on all cylinders going in starting the game, and he said it's been difficult. So it'll be interesting to see how he adds to their dynamics, and I'm hoping for a big game for him. Well, the Cavaliers also scoop uh, declared that they will get more physical. How do you think the Warriors are going to be able to step up to that challenge? And will they be able to match that physicality that the Cavs will ensue in Game 3? I mean, you sent out the dogs. You, you, you sent out a Draymond Green. You know, you, you, you sent out a JaVale McGee uh, to, to score. Their, their interior defense has always been magnificent, particularly in the last couple of years. Uh, but, but I think uh, what will be a, a key factor for the Warriors is you know, how well uh, Kevin Durant and, and Steph Curry makes those defensive switches. You see LeBron struggling with uh, and, and not being able to cover his guy after, you know, speeding up the court, getting shots and running back on defense. But, you know, the Warriors, or rather the Cavaliers, should make it more difficult for the Warriors back on, on, on D. And I think that uh, a key matchup will be whether, you know, a guy like Kevin Durant and, and LeBron James cover each other the whole game. I think LeBron is going to come out hot. You want him to come out and shoot hot, but it's, it's, it's the other guys. Uh, that you, that you want to see whether there be a consistent role. Kevin Love quietly has been the most consistent guy on the Cavs team, but you know who can who can guard him, um, and who's going to consistently stop LeBron? You know, I, we we know what everybody can do. We've seen him play all season. I think Game Three is like a game of Connect Four. You know, you, you you see the first couple moves somebody makes in that game, but Game Three really determines who wins the series. And the Cavs have been in a situation before where they've been down a couple years ago in the finals. It's a different team. There's no Kyrie Irving on that team. But it'll be interesting to see what LeBron and, and, and Cavs and company pull out of their hat and whether the Golden State Warriors can sustain their, their transition. Scoop, what about the guys off the bench? Well, you've seen a, a, a revitalized uh, Nick, Nick Young. Uh, he's, he's done his thing for, for, the, uh, for the Golden State Warriors. Um, you, you've seen... Guys coming off the bench. You, you've seen guys, reserve guys coming off the bench throughout the playoffs. I mean, a lot of guys were playing garbage minutes for the Golden State Warriors in game two because they had such a substantial lead. I mean, their bench versus the Cavs bench, I mean, listen, man, I, I think we could give the Cavs some help.
But the Warriors, I mean, from from positions one through fifteen, they've really been able to play well. It's like the the Cavaliers have no answers to their bench. You really saw their bench coming out to play in Game Two, and um, you know we talk about their starters a lot, but their bench got a bunch of young guys that will probably get big contracts in the next couple of years, but. I really like the Warriors bench, and that's the thing that really scares you about the Warriors because everybody talks about the, the four guys in the team, Clay Thompson. They talk about Steph Curry. They talk about uh, Clay Thompson. They talk about all those guys, but their bench really showed up to play in game in game two. And like I said, it's not going to be an easy match. I, on record, have picked the Cavaliers to win the series, but this is not a typical series, man. It's like they've not broken a sweat. They're like the, the, the cheat code on NBA Jam that you just can't crack. Their bench is the thing that's helping them as much as it is the starters on the bench. Like, I, I really do think the bench the, don't get as much credit as the, as the starters do because the starters play like starters. Well, I like that reference on that uh, NBA Jam cheat code. It's like a Game Shark for PlayStation, but then Scoop. Yeah, um, yeah but then uh, as much as we talk about uh, the four starters of the Golden State Warriors, Kevin Durant, uh, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, Stephen Curry. On the other side is LeBron James, Kevin Love. But more than that, what about the coaching between Steve Kerr and Coach Teron Lu? How is this separating them, you know, uh, in terms of uh, strategizing the X's and O's for this series? Well, I mean, they both come from a coaching pedigree. Uh, they both have studied under Phil Jackson, Ty Lu during his time with the Los Angeles Lakers, and then, you know, St Steve Kerr uh, as a member of the Chicago Bulls, and then Kerr later on playing for the Spurs, and playing for the, you know, the, the Portland Trailblazers, and even playing in Cleveland. Not many people forget that he was a Cavalier at one time. But history aside, um, Steve Kerr is having a magnificent, magnificent season. Um, and, and really, he shows up without a tie unless his team coach amongst themselves. We know the pedigree that Steve Kerr comes from. We know that um, he's been outspoken about things going on on this side of the land in, 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 uh, in the United States with U.S. President Donald Trump. We know about uh, you know what he brought to the table playing with Michael, but more than anything, I, I think that Steve Kerr has been a motivator. And in, in a lot of respects, and I've written about it at Basketball Society uh, online, I talked about how he inherited the team that Mark Jackson coached and built. But those guys are self-contained guys uh, on the Warriors, and you know I think those guys are professionals. They know how to play. I think in Ty Lue's case, Ty Lue inherited LeBron James and a lot of other uh, fact, a lot of other players on that team that can also coach themselves. But I also do think that the Golden State Warriors are the Chicago Bulls of this generation. Uh, they went 73 and nine and did lose in 2016 against the Cavs, on, which they didn't get the, the, the historical record that the Bulls set uh, at 72 and 10 and a championship. But um, Ty Lue, you know, studying under Doc Rivers, those defensive schemes, both with the Clippers and with the Boston Celtics. Uh, Ty, Lue, Ty Lue is a coach that doesn't get a lot of credit because everybody thinks that LeBron is the GM, the coach, the player, the guy that sells popcorn, the guy that, you know, sweeps the floor. But Ty Lue's not, not a punk either, you know. He, he dealt with some health issues uh, similar to the way Steve Kerr did a couple years ago. So I think when it all comes down to it, like I said, game three comes down to style of play and tempo. When Le you can kind of tell in the first quarter when somebody like LeBron James really wants it. He plays with an extra pep in his, in his step. He's inspired. Uh, but he didn't look like, he didn't look inspired LeBron in game two. He mm -hmm. looked a little tired. He looked a little frustrated. And, you know, after seeing himself on social media and memes with his hands up in the air, catching this next to uh, J.R. Smith m minus that offensive blunder, offensive rebound blunder, you know, you got to kind of settle in. And I think Cleveland will, will, will be about as much about coaching as it will be just style of play on the floor. LeBron will need to channel Boston Celtics Eastern Conference Finals this year. He'll also need to channel uh, his earlier days when he played against the Pistons and took the Cavaliers to the finals. I believe that was in 2007 in the Eastern Conference Finals. LeBron James and the Cavaliers have a lot of work to do, but so do the Golden State Warriors. Location, location, location. Time zone changes, pressure. The pressure is on the on the Golden State Warriors because they can't get, get comfortable. If you remember... In 2015 and 2016, the Warriors won the first two games in blowout and got comfortable. Mm -hmm. Comfortability breeds contempt. And if the, Cavs, if the Golden State Warriors won it, they got to close it out in Cleveland. If not, they're allowing a Cleveland team that is hungry to come back into the series and win. Scooby. I don't think they want that problem, brother. Scooby, Scooby, uh, just a quick one. Uh, do you think with much of objectivity, you mentioned earlier that 
the Warriors aren't really gassed compared to the Cavs where they're in desperation mode. Do you think that this will be a miracle game for them? Do they need a big miracle for game three? For the, for the Cleveland Cavaliers? Yes, sir. Uh, they need it just as bad as um, I need some water. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. But I, I think the Golden State, or rather the Cleveland Cavaliers need it because they, 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 they're playing beneath their privilege in this series. The series legitimately should be 1-1 right now. When game two was, was a no-brainer. The, the Cavs won, or rather the Warriors won that fan square, minus a couple of bad calls by the refs, by the way. Um, but in ga game one, once the Cavs went to overtime, you knew it was over. They just ran out of gas. You have to play a perfect game in order to beat the Golden State Warriors. LeBron played his part, but all those other segmented parts on that team, they got to do their part too, and they haven't done that. Thank you so much for joining us here on Early Edition. My brother, see you later tonight. All right.